My name is Jesse, Jesse Geisler, um, and I am a manufacturer of performance road bikes. And this one here was a, a bike that I started actually a long time ago and then shelved. This is a full Columbus XCR tube set. The tube set is seamless stainless steel butted and uh, I chose it because I was pursuing um, the, uh, the best outcome in terms of weight for the material. I think it was um, 1.4 kilograms. Um, so, and, I, I, and in hindsight, I think there's actually way, ways of going down further. Um, and I'm working towards that with particular machinery that I'm, you know, engage, I'm going to be engaging. I've always been fascinated by that particular tube set because it's a tube set that builders do struggle with um, because it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it is on the very thin side. There's certain areas that are well under 0.5 of a millimetre. Obviously that's very carefully thought out and um, there's lead-ins, I lead into those areas. It's not like um, a, a sharp intersection of wall thicknesses. But yeah, there's some um, stuff going on in the inside of the frame that only I know about. Um, but I'm satisfied that, uh, that uh, is all working towards that, that reduction in weight outcome and without, sacri without sacrificing the um, integrity, which is paramount to me. I execute the build in what I refer to as a full TIG construction. TIG welding is a, is a fascinating way to build a bike. I believe it's the lightest and strongest way, but it's also the most difficult uh, in my estimation. Um, and so um, I think that sort of separates builders out of the pack a little bit. As a person, I am um, drawn to hurdles. As I was building it, I realized how sh short a time I'd given myself. And um, I thought, well, this is a good test of my workshop. Um, as a builder, I am what I would refer to as a machine-based builder. And translated, that just means that I rely on machinery to deliver outcomes in the preparation of the uh, materials. Uh, I'm what I refer to as, as an astute buyer of high-end precision machinery of good provenance. And so that takes the form of European equipment that was at the top of the tree through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, so I'm, I've, I continued that process for many years and, and still continue to um, search for better machinery to deliver the outcomes I'm searching for. And so um, my workshop, the busyness aspect of it is that um, sometimes I will buy a machine and then I'll find a better machine and I'll buy that machine as well. And I'm sometimes a little bit slow to, um, uh, to release the original machine. Yeah, there's probably a number of machines there that I'm, I'm, I have a very good mechanical connection with. Um, I've, a, a few of my machines, uh, there's probably only uh, five to six of them in Australia. Um, uh, I've got a, a tool room lathe that is um, arguably one of the finest that was ever made. Um, I've got, um, which is an American machine, um, and I've also got um, a tool grinding machine which is very rare and very expensive and very um, versatile, and in, it gives me a great deal of control and power over um, delivering those um, cutter regrinding outcomes that I'm looking for. It's a Deckel S11, and the 11 aspect re refers to the 11 axes of rotation and movement that have, um, the machine has. And so it's incredibly flexible and versatile and um, very, very, very powerful machine that delivers the outcomes that I need and also that the people that bring the, the tools to me to sharpen. So I, I sharpen for other people in the industry. There's another machine that actually I have been working very hard on getting running. It's my first uh, numerically controlled machine, so it's computer driven. Um, and ultimately it's going to be the machine that I produce my in-house uh, dropouts on and solutions for um, disc brake rear ends and so forth. 
and um, that's also made by Deckel. Um, it's a mid-80s machine and it is like a Swiss watch. Yeah, it really is a powerful machine. It has very incredible accuracy um, and build quality that is, oh, while it's, um, you know, approaching uh, 30 plus five years old, it's still incredibly relevant and uh, it would probably outperform in terms of accuracy anything new on the market today. To, to change pace a little bit, can you tell us about the car behind, <laughs> behind us? I've had a love affair with Volkswagens for as long as I've been driving. The 1960 Carmen Gear, um, and um, you know, I, I, I've always um, admired the shape. I think it's a timeless shape that never goes out of style. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a project that I, I, I am currently working on and will continue to work on. And the, the project is taking the form of, I'd like to, I'm interested in performance outcomes, not dissimilar to my bikes. I like things to be engineered properly. And so, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the Ideal outcome, I don't know if this is achievable, but I'd like to road race it. Mm -hmm.